Good morning. Good morning. I think she was talking about me, but uh, I didn't really understand. But I really like the Evangelista. So uh, my name is Frederick Harper. I'm from Canada. So I speak French and English. Oh, there's some feedback. So I speak French and English, but I don't speak Spanish. So sorry about that. Uh, I'm a senior technical evangelist at Mozilla. What does that mean? My role is to usually, I usually talk to developers. I talk about technology, I talk about the web, mostly the web, mostly Firefox OS. My role, my job at Mozilla is to educate people about technology, is to excite developer about technology. But today, I'm not going to do a technical talk, no worries. Uh, during the presentation, if you go on Twitter, if you tweet during the presentation, feel free to use my Twitter handle, at fharper. And I'm going to put the slides online also for people that would like to see them. So I'm really, really happy to be here. And bear with me for this one. So lo siento, no hablo español. Is it OK? Everybody's laughing, so I guess it was not that good. Thanks to Google Translate, I uh, was able to find how to say. So it's basically what I know uh, in Spanish. I'm really sorry. The rest of the presentation will be in English. I will try to speak a little more slowly for some people, but I usually speak really fast. So if there is something, please let me know. So uh, I was quite happy. I'm pretty glad to be here. First, this is my first time in Uruguay. Uh, I did not have the time yet to visit. So it's in my plan to do this tomorrow. Uh, I'm really looking forward to visit Montevideo. So what I do day to day, I talk to developers. How many developers or engineer in the room? Just raise your hand. Great. We all look like this, don't you think? No, it's not true. It's not true. I used to be a developer, but I use the skills that many developers don't have. I'm social. I like to talk to people. I like to talk maybe too much. It's probably why I'm an evangelist today working at Mozilla. But still, my presentation is going to have an approach for people that like technologies people that love technologies, people that use technologies. So how many people in the room use technologies and like technologies? Oh, come on, everybody should raise their hand. You're still sleeping. You need coffee? I need coffee. So uh, for the developers in the room, quite often, when we are having that discussion with our customers, when we talk with our manager, when we talk with our coworkers about hey, we would need to create that mobile application. We would need to create that application that will work on different platforms for our customers, for uh, the enterprise, for ourselves. Most of the time, the discussion will be about, hey, which platform should I choose? Should I go with iOS? Should I go with Android? And if you're lucky, that discussion will be about, can we go native or can, should we use web technology? And I see some people noting in the room, it's true. And it's really if you're lucky. But most of the time, the answer will be, let's create a native application using the specific technology for iOS, using the specific technology for Android. But that makes me sad. That really makes me sad. Because the web technology should be your first choice. I'm not a big fan of statistics. But no matter which websites you're looking online, we're going to have a lot of devices connected to the internet in a couple of years. So ABI research, they're saying that in four years, not, uh, what, I don't know how to count, in six years, kind of six years, we're going to have 38 billion devices out there. This is crazy. That means more than one devices most of the time per people. But of course, if we remove the Internet of Things, if we remove those devices that we have no interaction with, we're still going to have a lot of the devices connected to the Internet. Many, many, many devices. And we have the Internet on many devices. Uh, what is the common point on most of those devices that I'm interacting with? It's the browser. I have a browser on my laptop, on my tablet, on my phone. I have a browser on my TV. I can browse the internet with my game console, my Xbox, my PlayStation. I even have a browser on my e-reader, on my Kindle. I can access the web. 
It may not always be the best experience ever, but I can access the web. And what's the common point from all those technology? It's the web, it's HTML, it's CSS, and it's JavaScript. Does that make sense? So, at Mozilla, we decided to continue to use that technology to create more awesome uh, application. So let me talk to you a little bit about Firefox OS, because this is the open device, this is the open OS that I know more, this is the open device that are working very well in Uruguay. So let me start by talking a little more about Mozilla. I don't want you to read that slide. I know everybody will do it because I said I don't want you to read that slide. But just keep looking at the white words. Mozilla is working together with people to keep the internet alive and accessible. This is what we do. At Mozilla, we are a nonprofit, and our goal is to give access to the web to more people. It's a really, really nice goal. So let me show you a small videos about uh, Firefox, the browser, where you can replace Firefox by Firefox OS. You can replace the words in that video by any other product we have at Mozilla. We're quite content to be the odd browser out. We don't have a fancy stock abbreviation to go alongside our name in the press. We don't have a profit margin. We don't have sacred rock stars that we put above others. We don't make the same deals, sign the same contracts, or shake the same hands as everyone else. And all of this is fine by us. We're a pack of independently spirited, fiercely unconventional people who do things a little differently. Where another company may value the bottom line, we value, well, values. When a competitor considers making something proprietary, we strive to set it free. And while most products and technologies are developed behind closed doors, ours are cultivated out in the open for everyone to see. We're not beholden to stake, share, or power holders. We answer to no one but you. And we don't operate this way for the fun, even though it is incredibly fun. We operate this way because we believe it's the right thing to do. We believe in principle over profit. We believe that secrecy is trumped by honesty, and corporate interest by community. We believe that the web is more cared for than owned, more of a resource to be tended to than a mere commodity to be sold. And we strongly believe in innovation that puts users front and center and squarely in the driver's seat. But most importantly, we believe in you. We believe that the world's best browser is made possible by engineers, programmers, designers, and people just like you, who give their time, talents, energy, and support to the cause. And we believe that together, with this cause in mind, we can continue to innovate for the benefit of the individual and the betterment of the web, so that it always and forever serves the greater good. We are all Mozilla Firefox. And we're not just a different kind of browser. We're a browser that's making a difference. This video, this video is, is kind of cheesy a little bit. But if the camera would be able to, to like zoom on me, I have the ghost bump because it's what makes Mozilla really different. And it's important to understand why Mozilla is different, because you understand, you will understand why Firefox OS. So we're not a company, we're not there to make profits. We're a nonprofit organization. We worked with people, and we don't have any interest about your data. We want your data to be sicker, we want to protect your data, but we don't have any interest, we don't have any business cases with your data. So a couple of years ago, because Mozilla's mission is to open the web to more people, we thought about it and we say, there is more and more people that don't have computers at home. They use tablet or they use smartphone, and they have access to everything they need. But there is still a lot of people that don't have access to the web. We, in the room, we're lucky. You probably have a smartphone. If you're here, you probably have access to the internet. You probably have those devices that give you access to the web. But there are so many people that don't have access to the web. So we decided to create that OS, that operating system, that will be open, that will be really uh, a good operating system based on web technologies for people. So one year ago, we launched our first phone. And what is great when it comes to Firefox OS? Those phones are based on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
web technologies that you have in the browser. Those, those are not technologies that we own. And everything you see, when you're going to try Firefox OS Phone, if you already have one, if you already see one, everything you see is made with web technology, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it's super important. Even if you make a, a call, you use the telephony application, what you see is some CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. And I'm going to say those words quite often, because it's really critical, it's really important, and it's what we want them to do. It's what we're the best of when it comes to technology. It's also open source. So you can go on the web, you can go on GitHub for the developers in the room, you can see the code. You can see how the platform is working. And it's good, because there is a, a lot of great uh, opportunities about it. You can either understand what's going behind the scene, what's happening behind the door. We have nothing to hide. You can participate if you're a developer. You can have features. You can fix bugs. So this is really good technology. We launched in the first year in more than 24 countries. Those devices, they're primarily for emerging market. What does that mean? Is that we created those devices to be really inexpensive. Actually, Mozilla is not creating devices. We create the OS and we work with partners like CT, like Halcatel, to have those devices. And we work with partners like Movistar to be sure that those devices are available in different countries, are available to the stores for you to buy. Even if you don't have devices in your country, and it's not the case for you, but if you have friends elsewhere and they cannot go to their local store to buy devices, you can buy those online. And you can see that it's pretty inexpensive. There is one device there that you can buy for uh, $100, so it's kind of 2,000 Uruguay pesos, I think. But it's an OK conversion. So it's quite inexpensive. It's really affordable for people. And you need to keep in mind that you may be able, you may have the money to buy the latest iPhone, to buy the latest Android. But not everybody does. You may are OK to, be, uh, to have a contract when you get a phone for uh, a lower cost. Some people may not be able to or may not want to. So you have that liberty. And there is other provider that go beyond the initial uh, level of Firefox, like Movistar. They are having also really, really great uh, uh, services when it comes to Firefox OS. So that lowered down the cost to access the web. And this is really the goal behind Firefox OS. I'm really proud to work with Movistar because they really understood what we want to do with Firefox OS. So we, we, you have four devices in your way. It's kind of really interesting. So everywhere else in the world, in Tully, we have a little more than 10 devices. But as far as I know, Uruguay is uh, one of the countries where you have the, m uh, the more choices when it comes to devices. So you have the Alcatel One Touch Fire C, you have the ZT Open, you have the ZT Open 2, and you also have the LG Fire Web. They are all Firefox OS devices. They are all available basically at the same price. Great OS, great hardware, really inexpensive. You can also, if you're a developer, you can buy another device, a little more expensive. It's still available online. You can get that device shipped everywhere in the world, uh, a little more, a little more IM device in that case. But $100 or 2,000 Uruguay pesos, that can be a lot for many people. So what we did, we created another version of the smartphone. Actually, we just used the OS because it was created to be fast and efficient. We launched a new phone a couple of weeks ago in India. You can buy that phone for $33, 600-ish Uruguayan pesos. It's crazy. It's not a feature phone. It's a smartphone. You have access to application. You have access to everything you need. And it's not because it's inexpensive that you don't have access to application. We have a marketplace. You have most of the application you're looking for. And if you're a developer, there is great opportunities there. Because those are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript application. And we don't charge you to publish your application to the marketplace. We also have something called the Adaptive App Search. Because the web is the platform, you have a, customized, uh, a custom uh, experience on your phone when you're looking for something specific. You can even try applications that are not installed on your phone because the web is the platform. For developers in the room, that are using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript right now. Those are really amazing technology. But most of the time, as I said, 
we're going to choose native technology. We're going to create native application because, oh, that's going to be faster because we're going to have access to the hardware. So what we did, we created those APIs called web APIs that we put on top of JavaScript. So you don't have to download a new SDK. You just have to use those APIs that will give you access to the hardware. But at the same time, that will give you the opportunity to create great experience for your users because it's what you want at the end of the day. You have different ways to create your applications. You can host your application yourself, or you can publish your application to the marketplace. So all the ecosystem is really open, uh, has with everything that Mozilla is doing. And it's really easy to start creating Firefox OS application. If you already have a web application right now, uh, for the technical people in the room, you only have to create, you only have to add a manifest file. This is basically a JSON file where we're going to put your information, and you're going to have a Firefox OS application. That should be as easy as this. So it's really easy to port your application to Firefox OS. And what is great is that for people that have Android devices right now, if you have Firefox, the browser, installed on your device, you're going to be able to install Firefox OS application like any other native Android application on your device. So as a developer, you're going to be able to reach more people. But that's, that's not everything. On the desktop, you're going to be able to do the same thing. No matter if you're on OS X, on Windows, on Linux, if you have the Firefox browser on the desktop, you're going to be able to install Firefox OS application. So this is not enough. I told you, I usually talk to developers, so I'm going to give some love to developers. We also have Cordova support, or PhoneGuard support. And now I see some interrogation point from non-technical people, what this guy is talking about. Uh, it's just great for developers. We have that support. So it's a technology that gives you the opportunity to write, again, HTML application that you're going to be able to target to create application on different platforms like Android, iOS, but also Firefox OS. So a great way for you to save time to target multiple platforms. And it's easy to start for developers. Everything you need is inside the browser. You have access to the App Manager. You have access to the simulator. Those are free add-ons. You don't need a real device to start creating application. And you don't need, you can choose the IDE you want to create those applications because it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But when it comes to debugging your application, you have all the tools you need inside Firefox. And for the non-technical people in the room that are like, oh my god, this guy is losing my time talking about those technical things, the only thing you need to remember is that we have powerful tools that give the developers what they need to create great experience for you, to create great experience for your customers. So what's Mozilla's vision for Firefox OS, or vision for, for the future? Basically, we want to continue to do what we're doing right now. Because I think it's quite successful, it's working well. We want to have more devices out there, because we want to give you more choices. And it's starting. We see most of the smartphone, most of the Firefox OS technology are smartphone right now. But you're going to see uh, some tablets coming in beta version for developers, so that's going to be available to consumer at some point. You're going to see a company like Panasonic. They are working on a TV with Firefox OS. Or you may have seen recently Matchstick. That's going to be a kind of Chromecast uh, equivalent working with Firefox OS. Because it's open, because it's there, people, OEM, hardware company, they can create great devices using a powerful OS. We want Firefox OS to be available everywhere. You're probably happy. I'm happy that Firefox OS is available here. But I want more countries to be available uh, to have access to those devices, to have access to those technology. But we also want those APIs that I just quickly introduced to you to be part of the standard. Because right now, if you want a great integration in the platform, you need to use those API that we created. They are specific to Firefox OS, and we don't like this. What we want you to do is not to create Firefox OS application. We want you to create open web application. We want you to create application that's going to give a great experience to your user, no matter the platform. So we are working with the W3C, with other companies, to be sure that those APIs will be part of the standard. And you already start to see those. A good example is the battery status API. 
Right now, if you're using Chrome Canary, so the, beta, uh, the alpha version or beta version of Chrome, you're going to have access to that API. So this is something we started, but we work with those uh, standard body to be sure it's going to be part of the, uh, of the system, of the standard. We will continue to deliver quality all the time, every time, everywhere when it comes to Firefox OS. But what about the web? What about the future of the web? Because it's not just about Mozilla, it's not just about Firefox OS. Actually, everything we do is about the web. It's never always Mozilla, it's never about Firefox OS, it's always about the web. So, again, we want more people to have access to the web. No question, we want more people to have access to the web. And we should not be the only one. We want other people to do this with us. And it's, it's, it's quite working well, I think. It's getting better and better. We're uh, more and more people have access to the web, but that's not enough, more people. We want everybody to have access to the web. Of course, in other places, there is other issues, because having access to the web is kind of a first world problem when it comes to some countries. But still, it's what we work for, it's what we want. We want people to have choices. Many different Firefox OS devices, many different Android devices, many other devices. We don't want people to be locked in. Right now, today, in your platform, developers or no developers, when you're installing an application, when you're buying an application, you're stuck with that platform. If you move to another platform, you won't have access to those applications. So it's why the web is so important. It's why those open web applications that I was talking about are so important. We want those applications. If you buy an application or use an application on Firefox OS, I want you to be able to use that application on Android. I want you to be able to use that application on an iPhone. I want you to uh, use this application on a future platform or any other open platform like Tizen. We want more open source because that's give the power to developers to iterate, to have features, to fix bugs, that gives the power to people to understand, again, what's behind the door. So we need to continue to promote open source. We need to continue to promote open standard. Isn't it cute? So this is part of a poster, and it's usually written, don't hurt the web, use open standard. So don't hurt the web, use open standard. By using open standard, you're not using proprietary technology you're part of a bigger group, you have more chance that your technology, your application, will be available on different devices, will be available on different platforms, no matter what, because you're gonna use technology that are not proprietary. And this is great news. One or two or three days ago, W3C, uh, this is the uh, group that managed the standard of HTML, uh, they just announced that we reached a final uh, version of HTML5 after a couple of years. So I hope that means that the web will be more interoperable and will be more open. But we need to think about the developers. Because I'm a developer, I love developers. We need to create opportunities for developers. So it's good to be open, it's good to think about the web, it's good to think about the open standard. But if there is no opportunities for developers, they will do something else. They will use something else. And I'm sorry for you, but you should really love developers because they are the one who are creating the application that you're using day to day. So if there is no opportunity for them, no business case, no way to make money with those systems, they won't create application. You won't be happy. I won't be happy. That's not going to work. We also need to create great technology for those developers. So more than opportunities, what we did with those APIs, we saw that with HTML, it was a great technology, HTML5 was really powerful, but we're missing some functions, some features, so th the developers can really create that great experience. But it's not enough, enough to talk about developers. We need to think about the consumer. Those devices may be open, those devices may be less expensive, you may have more choices, but if you don't have a great experience, that means nothing. If you don't like the application you're using, if you don't like the phones you're using, the tablet, the PC, whatever the technology you're using, if you don't have fun, if it not serve the purpose why you use the web, that's not gonna happen either. And the other part of, probably the last thing that 
I would say uh, that we're looking for is that uh, we have something called WebMaker, Mozilla WebMaker. And part of this is to help people to be web literate. We don't want you to be just consumer. We want you to take that web, to be part of that web, to be able to create for the web. So that does not mean that we want everybody to be developers. But we want you to be able to not just consume the web, but really be part of the web. There's always, you always need a small kitten in your presentation. So usually people do, ah. No, come on. Uh. Oh my god. You need coffee. So we're going to have coffee after. It's OK. So uh, this is only the beginning. I only had like kind of 30 minutes to introduce you a little more about Firefox OS for those of you that did not know. More of the eye level idea. So why we created Firefox OS why Firefox OS exists. Also about the future. What do we want next? And when I say we, it's not me and like two people at Mozilla. It's not me and the people that are being paid by Mozilla. Because Mozilla is much more than the paid staff. Actually, Mozilla would not exist without all the volunteers, all the people in the communities that are giving talks, that are writing code, that are helping other people to use software, that every day help the web to be more open, help people to have access to the web, and really help people to have a great opportunities. So we want, and you should want, an open web. Give access to the web to uh, more people and really get a quality experience. So there is a community in, uh, in Uruguay. You can join them on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, they're always looking for people to help. This is my... Uh, shameless promotion of the day. Uh, join them, really nice people. Uh, they're doing great stuff here. And finally, if you are developers, please feel free to join Mozilla to help us with our software. If you're a consumer, please feel free to come to me, talk to me, talk to any, any other people. If you, there is something that is not working for you, if there's something you don't like with Firefox OS, Firefox, if you have any features idea, any question, let me know. I'm going to be there all day. Feel free to reach out to me uh, after the conference by email or on Twitter or even on LinkedIn. So thanks for your time. I hope you're going to have a great conference. I hope it starts the day well. And you had a, you're going to have a really, really good speaker all day long. So thanks for having me. Thank you, Frederick. And in fact, there's a lot of questions, but we only have time to um, tell you one and, and of course many of the questions are um, with your name in Twitter so you will be able to answer them directly but uh, one of our uh, guests uh, asked how does Mozilla finances itself being a non-profit organization is it a typical question yeah. but I think it's very no, no, interesting no, no, no. this is a typical question funny enough uh, I, I got an offer from Mozilla and after I joined Mozilla, I just realized that I didn't know how my paycheck would come at home. So this is a question I have to ask mm -hmm. uh, my manager so also. You, you have your, so, uh, like, yeah, like three minutes. Oh, three minutes? Oh, that, that's more than enough. <laughs> that's going to be a quick answer. Sorry. I know I talk a lot, but that's going to be a quick answer. So uh, basically, when you're using Firefox, the browser, uh, on the desktop, or even on Android, and you're searching, uh, using search engine, uh, engine like Google, Bing, Yahoo, no matter the technology you're using, we have partnership with those people, and they basically gave us money because there is enough people using Firefox. So part of our money, it's funny, it's kind of funny because we have Firefox who is competing with Chrome, with Internet Explorer, we have Firefox who is competing with Android, competing with other devices, but those companies like Google, Microsoft, and Yahoo, they're the ones giving us money. So we're able to have nearly 1,000 employees working at Mozilla, so it's getting bigger and bigger. But as I said, Mozilla is bigger than the employees. We have all those people in the communities that we like to help, that we sponsor when they are doing events, that we bring uh, to your uh, offsite, that we bring to conferences. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's getting well. Yep. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks it was you. very interesting. And uh, we'll see you around during the, during the day. Thank you. And a big, un gran aplauso para, para Frederick.